What's up everybody? Welcome back to another full episode and get stoked because this one is going to be about a very popular topic and a very popular group of turtles, that being the box turtles, particularly those that belong to the genus Terrapine, which are mainly found throughout North America. And chances are, if you're a turtle lover and you keep turtles, at some point in your life, you've probably come across the chance of uh, raising a box turtle and possibly from a baby. Um, if you haven't, and this is your first time, I hope this really helps you. And if you are someone that has in the past and has used outdated information to do so, I hope this helps you from here on out. Now, speaking of outdated information, the internet is still littered with it. Inaccurate and outdated information continues to surface and people continue to use it. But times have changed and it's time that we all get on the ball and we figure out how to do this properly. Okay, it is our responsibility to do this nothing less than the best way that we possibly can. And if you cannot offer proper care to a box turtle or any species of turtle, just don't do it. These animals are designed to live an extremely long time, comparable to human ages and even longer. So let's get together on this. I'm gonna show you what we do. It's not the only way that works, but it is another method for you to take home and chew on if you're considering raising one of these absolutely amazing and primitive turtles. Here we go. First and foremost, it's imperative for us to understand the relationship that box turtles have with water. Regardless of species or subspecies, water plays a very crucial role in the early development and it is needed throughout their entire lives. What a lot of people do not realize is that box turtles are capable of swimming, much like what we would see in a painted turtle, and they can even submerge to the bottom of a pond. They can even walk along the bottom, much like a mud or musk turtle would. They're just fine and they know what they're doing because water is not a stranger to any box turtle. In the case of some species of box turtle, such as the endangered Cohelan box turtle, they are also known as the aquatic box turtle because they spend such a vast degree of their lives in it. They breed in it, they swim in it, they hunt in it, and everything in between. So when it comes to designing the outdoor enclosures for our box turtles here at Garden State Tortoise, we always make sure that they have some kind of body of water that they can easily find access to. Sometimes the pond takes up half the enclosure, while other times it just takes up a small portion. And of course, there are are always sunlit areas. These turtles do need to bask, but some prefer more sun than others. So when you have a species that is more arid dwelling or is found typically in open prairies and areas like that, they are carefully placed in areas where they have more sun and less canopy, but they still always have some kind of pond in the enclosure. You want your animals to be successful early on, and the only way they can be successful at thriving is if you provide them what they need from the start. Even in the case of Asian species, like the beautiful Chinese box turtle, they as well require water and should never be without it. And that's how they get these beautifully colored, filled out, and smooth shells. Deformities in box turtles are a real problem. Box turtles also subject themselves to moist areas by digging into the damp earth, and they will even create burrows, or they may cover themselves with the surrounding substrate to cool off on a hot day. A lot of box turtles prefer canopied areas like forests, but plenty of them do occur in open areas. And let's not forget, rain. Rain is the main trigger in the activity of a box turtle during the warm months. It causes them to be on the move, explore, breed, hunt, and really, really get to different areas. And unfortunately, when this happens, this is the most most of the time when we see box turtles on the road and they inevitably are killed by vehicles. If you see a box turtle crossing, send it in the way it's heading, but never take it home. All right, so now that we are familiar with some box turtle behavior, including their precious relationship with water, we could take a closer look at the babies. And yes, the babies are undeniably outrageously cute and beautiful, regardless of species or subspecies. They are in fact small and fragile, but they are equipped to begin their lives all on their own. So all they really need from us is for us to provide what they absolutely need. It all starts with removing them from the incubator and when they are ready and hatched, and by ready, I mean they have absorbed their yolk sac, are fully formed, and are straightened out, we get them ready for rearing. So we inspect the clutch, make sure everybody looks good, 
And then they're gonna need a quick bath because the incubation medium, which is vermiculite, needs to come off because it's really caked to them once they hatch. And then you could start to see their color, see if there's anything going on with them, like anomalies or deformities, and uh, just, just give them a nice good inspection and welcome them to the world. And then we place them in water to get anything that's stuck on them off. That's what we're doing with these coheland box turtles. And in the case of these Gulf Coast box turtles, they're pretty cleaned off on a paper towel in a very small temporary container as we move them out to the building. Okay, so what I have in front of me here are six individual 16 quart totes or Sterilite containers. Okay, these are basically plastic sweater boxes. Uh, they're used for storage. They sell like hotcakes during college season, which is now. Uh, so they could be a little bit difficult to find, but I choose 16 quart ones to use and we're gonna put two turtles per container. All right, and the reason for that is, is because you want these turtles to have some space. Babies do tend to congregate in nature, and that's not just for turtles, it's also for baby tortoises. But these are really confined spaces, and they are just to get these animals boosted to a much uh, more robust level, a much more, a much more robust size, so that they can be placed into other quarters or even go outside. Now, you can raise baby box turtles outdoors from the start. They're wild animals, and especially if you occur in an area where they are naturally found. We're in New Jersey, so we have eastern box turtles here. There's no reason why baby eastern box turtles and some of the subspecies that fall underneath them cannot be raised safely outdoors. But that's for a little bit more advancement and advanced keepers with that that you know, are willing to take the chances that come along with it and can provide 100% 24-7 protection to keep them safe from predators. We're going to start with just an indoor thing. Indoor keeping is a little bit more popular, especially for raising any baby colonian. Uh, so we're going to use that for starters here. So again, we've got six 16-quart Sterilite containers here, plastic sweater boxes. And what I've gone ahead and done was place a half an inch of water in them. So five of these have about a half of an inch of water in them. They're also equipped with a coconut, half a coconut hide, which are sold for reptiles in pet stores. Uh, they use them for baby snakes and some other animals, um, but they actually work really well as a hiding area for baby turtles. So that goes right in the water. And then we go ahead and we just take a fake piece of plant, okay? You can be creative. You can get any plant that you want. They sell these at Michael's and Hobby Lobby and they're very safe. Uh, and you go ahead and you just put that in the water because that's not only gonna add a little bit of aesthetic appeal, but it's also gonna add some more added refuge. Baby box turtles need to feel secure and hidden 90% of the time. Then on the last container, I went ahead and filled that with some of our natural sandy coastal substrate here. It's very loamy. It's got a nice mix of soil and sand to it, a little bit of gravel here and there. And I've also added some uh, fine pine litter that also, uh, you know, it also has a little bit of um, twigs and stuff in there from the trees. And then I added a little plastic water dish with some larger rocks in there so that the turtles don't flip over. And this one is gonna be for a different type of box turtle and you're gonna see why. Okay, so here's your basic startup kit right here where uh, how to get ready to raise some of these, but this is not where they're going to stay. And I'm gonna show you why. Since moisture and humidity are so crucial to baby box turtle development and growth, we're gonna basically trap them in it by placing the sterilite containers inside existing reptile enclosures. Now these are custom made reptile enclosures that we are building in our external building. Nothing is finished yet, not even the walls, so this is essentially all a prototype, but it gives you an idea. You can see that these are about four by two feet and two feet high, uh, a glass front that slides, and when you take a look inside, you can see that it's basically all closed in except for a mesh at the top to allow in some lighting. The turtles are going to need a day and night cycle. You can see the walls, the top, the bottom, and the glass again. And you can use already made ones. You don't have to make them yourselves. There's a lot of different types on the market right now. So we've had a lot of box turtles hatching because it is the season. But we're just going to take a couple examples to show you guys how to set them up because we've got tons to set up ourselves. We're going to take two baby Florida box turtles, two Gulf Coast box turtles, two Eastern box turtles, two three-toed box turtles, two Coheland box turtles, and one ornate and one desert box turtle. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna place the two per container. Here go the Florida box turtles right into the water there. And we're gonna do the same with these beautiful little dark Gulf Coast box turtles. Love these little panhandles, so black. These two beautiful Eastern box turtles gonna go right in. And the same thing with these beautiful three toads right in the water. 
Now for the cohelins here, I added about an inch of water. So it's slightly deeper because they are fully aquatic. So there they go. And then we're gonna take our one ornate and one desert and place them in the more terrestrial sterilite container because these guys come from more arid landscapes and I don't like to keep them in water at all times like the others. So the reason for why we're essentially forcing this humid environment on our baby box turtles is because that's exactly what they do to themselves in nature. Baby box turtles are instinctively programmed to stay hidden. So what they do is they find microclimates within leaf litter, pine needles, mud, uh, the edges of ponds and other aquatic areas so that they can constantly be moist, okay? And that swells them up. It fills out their shells so that they don't have recessed scoots or sunken in eyes because I cannot describe to you in any word or any sentence, just how fast a baby box turtle can dehydrate. And once that happens, chances are you are not bringing that animal back and it's going to perish. Now this brings me to another point. Baby box turtles are staying hidden 90, 95% of the time, maybe more when they're that small because they can even find little invertebrates and other things to eat within the leaf litter and stuff that they're hiding in. Uh, so they're not being subjected to UVB. And I have found over several decades now that baby box turtles do not require UVB lighting, artificial UVB lighting inside to stay healthy, strong, and thrive. Once they go outside eventually, because all of our box turtles do, that's when they're subjected to it. But I'm basically following what these animals are doing in nature. And they're also going to be getting vitamin D3 through the food they're eating, which is going to help their metabolic rate and keep their bones and shells strong and continue to turn them to bone so that when they're adults, they're rock solid, okay? So no UVB lighting, and we're going to force this humid envir environment on them so that they can stay safe, warm, and hydrated at all times. One by one, each container is carefully brought over to these custom reptile enclosures. And again, you can use ones that are made by companies online. You don't have to build them yourself. And they're placed inside. And we're gonna go ahead and put them in a row. And I found that in a four by two foot enclosure, you can fit four of these 16 quart Sterilite containers. So here you can see, we've got the four different containers in here and the other containers will go into another enclosure. And they're looking good. We're gonna close them up. We've got a heat light at the top on that mesh. Again, it's for heat, not for UVB. We're looking to keep these guys in the mid to low 80s during the day uh, and the 70s down to the 60s at night. Box turtles are very capable of getting cooler than that at night, which is fine. <laughs> box turtles are prone to overheating. I mean, look at how tiny they are. It's downright scary just how fast that can happen. So I don't keep them hot. I keep them in a warm, humid environment at a consistent rate. So I like to see the temperatures during the day in the low to mid 80s. And then at night, I've actually let these little babies drop all the way down to, to 55 degrees at night. That's right, folks, 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And I have never lost any of them to that. It's not a snap, it's gradual because my outdoor building that you can see in this whole video we've been working on this entire time fluctuates with the season. So, you know, the peak of winter in those mornings, it's actually a little bit crisp in here. It doesn't ever get to freezing or anywhere near it, but it does drop and that adds fluctuation. It helps replicate what might be going on with some of these box turtle types in nature. So, Temperatures during the day, mid to low 80s, but that 80 to 90% humidity is what's key because that's that constant, humid, warm, not hot environment. So there's no designated basking area, but the animals can choose to bask wherever they want because they're always in a warm, but not overly warm situation. You can use different tools like thermometers and hydrometers to keep an eye on the humidity and the temperature. And I have found that the humidity dropping is way worse than the temperature dropping or rising. So you're, you wanna keep that humidity very high. I never like to see it drop below 80%, even though the 70s are not really dangerous. You don't want it to get to that level because it can only fall from there if you're not really paying attention. Um, there are different reptile thermostats on the market uh, and this is one that I'm currently using right here for our snakes, but it does work well for turtles too if you're not able to really keep an eye on that temperature and humidity at all, humidity at all times. So there you have it, folks. You want a warm environment, you can let it drop at night, but you wanna always keep up with that humidity because that's also gonna promote that naturalistic behavior that you wanna see your box turtles exhibit from an early age.
Just like the moisture situation, you're gonna wanna set your baby box turtles up for success with their diet very early on. And then when they turn into juveniles and even eventually adults, they will be accepting a wide variety, but they will also make your life easy in accepting commercial diets such as we see right here with this adult female Eastern box turtle. This makes life very easy, but it starts with variety and early on. Invertebrates such as crickets and grasshoppers and of course night crawlers and earthworms are a big part of box turtle diets and they should always be provided even early on. Uh, you will, might want to have to chop up the earthworms if you can't find small ones when the babies are little. And with crickets and grasshoppers, you're going to need to remove the back legs. may seem unfair, but the priority here, folks, is getting our baby box turtles to thrive and grow. You can also feed frozen thawed rodents, uh, baby mice, adult skinned mice. There's a lot of benefit in calcium in these that can be offered. And then as box turtles age, typically up to, you know, around a year and after, they will start accepting more um, fruit and vegetable matter. Berries are are uh, important part of a box turtle's diet in moderation. Raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, and strawberries, and even mulberry are relished by these animals. Commercial diet comes into play here, and this is how we're gonna get that vitamin D3 into our animals so that UVB lighting isn't so important as it is for some other species, okay? There's a lot of high quality diets on the market, such as Missouri, Zoomed, and Omega-1. Zoomed makes a baby aquatic turtle food pellet, which is excellent because you can put this right in the water for your baby box turtles, and they start taking it sooner than later. This also works for baby wood turtles. Don't be afraid to do this with them. And in fact, all the information I'm giving you can be suitable for the North American wood turtle as well. One way to get several beneficial food items into your baby box turtles all at once is by creating a mash for them. This is essentially pellet based, but you can use cooked sweet potato and fruits like banana or peach, but of course, berries will work as well since they are a favored choice by many box turtles as it is. First, you'll wanna take the dry pellets and soak them in water. In this case, I'm using both Missouri Aquatic Turtle Diet and Missouri Croc Diet. It takes a while for them to soften enough to become spongy, but once they are, you're gonna to wanna to mash them together as much as you can and it will create a fine but gritty mix. Once the pellet mix is ready, add that to a portion of cooked sweet potato or something else and then mash that together. As for measurements, I eyeball everything folks, but I'm dealing with a lot of turtles and if you make too much, this mash can be stored in the refrigerator for a few days so you can just use it again. Now I'm gonna add some banana to this mix, which I will change up next week to something else. And I have found that using vitamin powders and calcium powders does nothing but force it on the animals. And when you're offering a well-varied diet, they're getting those things from all these different food sources. You can serve this on a little plate or even a piece of cardboard or right in the water. And even the wood turtles right here, you can see will take it. And of course, they will learn to accept this well into adulthood and eat it voraciously, as you can see here with some of our adults. I've truly found that when box turtles are raised like this, it seems like almost no time before they start looking like this. They really fill out in just a few months time and that shell starts to get very hard. And then before you know it, you are dealing with this. These are juveniles and sub-adults that are several years old that are just exhibiting naturalistic appearances. And I generally like to move these animals into an outdoor situation once they are approaching about three and a half inches. Again, it can be done at smaller sizes and I have successfully kept baby box turtles outdoors too. But in reference to this video, generally between three and four inches is when you're gonna to want to introduce them to an outdoor setting. This is actually the very first Cohelan box turtle that I've ever hatched. And he's uh, nearly an adult now at uh, six years old. And just look at him, he's flawless. I'm very proud of this turtle. And again, this all works with Asian species too. I mean, look at these gorgeous Chinese box turtles that are being raised here. Uh, some have been raised by a friend who used the same method of raising them in water. And when you look at them compared to an actual original wild caught adult like this, there's not too much of a difference. And again, other Asian species too, like this Barrett's box turtle, Cora Barretti, raised in water and flawless, and this Cora galbinifrons, or Indo-Chinese flowerback box turtle, also with amazing smooth growth. Walking around the yard and just checking on all these animals that have uh, been raised like this is just proof that this method can and does work, folks. So again, it's just one more thing for you to take home and chew on in considering raising these animals. So in closing, I just want to touch a little bit on the enclosures behind me that we featured in this video because I'm sure there's going to be some questions. Speaking of questions, leave them in the comments of this video and I'm going to answer them for you. 
Our custom enclosures are made out of melamine, which is a manufactured wood. The outer surfaces of melamine have a laminate that can be used to match it to any style of kitchen or what have you. But in this case, it helps somewhat protect the particles of wood, paper, and resin that melamine is made of from moisture. Still, we caulk all the seams to further protect the whole unit. You might be wondering, why not let the turtles use the whole enclosure instead of housing them in individual tubs? Well, while they're so small, they can become lost in a big enclosure as they spend all of their time hiding, and they will not be spending their entire lives inside these. The goal is to get them to a less vulnerable size and then get them outdoors to a more naturalistic setting with way more benefits. Not to mention, they will be very messy eventually and make the enclosure tough to nearly impossible to really keep clean or looking nice anymore. By having them in smaller tubs, that enables you to keep a constant easy eye on them and clean them effortlessly. Just to note, we dump the water out of these tubs daily and refill so that the animals are always in a fresh situation. You don't have to mimic this style setup exactly, and for example, if you don't wish to use fake plants, you can just use sphagnum moss right in the water. The turtles will love it and utilize it, but it will have to be discarded and replaced often. These enclosures are sort of a closed-in chamber and are designed to hold in humidity when moisture is provided within them. If you're in an excessively dry area or building, you may need to close these up more by blocking some of the ventilation at the top where the screen is to allow the light in. At the very same time, if you have a significantly humid building, you may not even need to keep the tubs or container inside an enclosure like this, and you could just keep them out in the open or on a shelf in your room. Box turtles are fascinating animals, and while they may not make the best option as a pet, they are captivating and deeply rooted in our childhoods as turtle lovers. For me, an eastern box turtle was the very first species of turtle I ever laid eyes on or touched. Like many others out there though, I too made some mistakes early on in learning the ropes of turtle husbandry, but looking forward, it's videos like this one that I hope will continue to shed as much light as possible on the subject and open doors to the future so that we can all become better listeners, better readers, and of course, better caretakers for these amazing reptiles. Mm -hmm.